Hi, this is a love letter to my grandmother. I'm Teresa, and this is my handsome husband, Eric, Hi. who's here under duress. <laughs> duress. He didn't want to do it with me. Um, so today, what recipe are we going to do? Do you remember? Something with something with bananas. Something with bananas. Sultan and I did a lot of recipes with apples. A telephone banana. Hello, are no. you there? Hello. No. I suspect banana bread. Banana bread. So today we're gonna do banana bread, <clears throat> and my grandmother's banana bread is called banana tea bread, and it is something that I remember her. Um, that my mom made a lot and my mom always saying that my grandmother made so this was a recipe that I had a lot growing up and that my mom must have had growing up as well um, but before we do the recipe I wanted to talk a little bit about something that's usually on our refrigerator do you want to show us Eric? No, no you show us <laughs> this is a little eggplant that my grandmother made it's um, a plastic canvas that she then did as a cross stitch and little pipe cleaners and magnet and googly eyes and I have so she gave it to my family in the 80s that's when she made these and I think there were tomatoes uh, there was a tomato and some other vegetables I don't remember anymore uh, I've moved a lot and in that time some of them have disappeared but I still have the eggplant and do you remember was it at her plate where Mm. We had it in Japan. Okay. Yeah. So this little eggplant has uh, lived all over the states. Um, it has lived in Japan. I didn't bring it with me to Taiwan or China or Vietnam, but we had it in Japan on our fridge. And it lives happily on our fridge here in California. Yay! Grandma's eggplants. We'll be plastic with us canvas. Forever. Forever. I love my eggplant. All right, so today you want to give us the recipe. It's right it there. This one? Yes, and you can see mm. it has been used quite a bit. Um, and this is a recipe I know really well, having made it a lot. So I don't know how much I need to refer to it. Um, we're gonna. Oh, I will. I will make sure she does the right thing. Oh, I'm actually gonna not follow the instructions. I'm gonna talk about that too. All right, so. Um, I'm going to preheat the oven to 350, and Eric, this is a quick bread, and what does that mean, quick bread? Mm. Well, it sounds like you it would ha be able to be made quickly. Uh, <gasps> I suspect there's no yeast in it, right? You baking right. powder, stuff, baking soda maybe. It's bready. It's, it's a... More than cake. Okay. It's a bread with no yeast, which makes it a, a quick, quick bread, bread to make. No. Um, yeah, right? No yeast. Yeah, it doesn't have to... I mean, it rises, but it doesn't have to rise. Right. The leavening but agent is, as you said, uh, baking powder. And this recipe has both baking powder and baking soda. Now, um, do you want to read us the first step? Cream, sugar, and shortening. Cream, sugar, and shortening. Excellent. Yeah, so, the sugar, there's the sugar. Oh, I tried so... Out? Yeah, it's all measured out. How much sugar should it be? Two thirds of a cup. Two thirds of a cup. And how much butter should we have? Uh, the butter. Well, for shortening, it says one third of a cup. One third of a cup. So I forgot to measure out our butter, but well, it's a, a stick about, is a stick is a half a cup. Yeah, and it's less than a cup. Yeah. So, so like whatever. So it's fine. more or less. So you went two thirds. Wait. No, it's a third yeah, of a cup. A third of a cup, yeah. Yeah, so this is more or less. We'll just take off like a sliver, and then this mm, is more or less. A little more than, well, okay. Maybe a little more than that. <laughs> a third and a half. Audience, we're going to debate a tiny bit. How about that? Okay, <laughs> he's gonna go get a stick of butter because he <laughs> does not trust my eyeballing. <laughs> uh, the big eyeballer that I am. <laughs> <laughs> he is a little bit more meticulous. Oh, no. You see, a third of a cup is only about that much. Wait, wait a minute. How are you looking? A third of a cup. Look, a third of a cup from there to there. I'm right. No, 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 no. no. Yes, I'm right. Take some more. No. Here. It's not. It's not soft though, and we won't be able to cream easily. But look.
Okay, that's what you get with, for doing it with your husband. <laughs> okay, I agree. I'll take off a tiny bit more. Okay. Oof. Do you feel better? Do you feel better? Alright. There you go. Shall I? Yeah, you're in charge of creaming. Creaming. Mm -hmm. okay. What is next? So we're supposed to have a cup of mashed bananas, and I was gonna eyeball that, but it's maybe. Fine. No, no, banana is actually an easy one. Okay. Generally, I find. Three bananas to be a nice amount of bananas, and I was going, I was going to mash it inside the bowl with the cream sugar. Yeah, How do you? I think the eggs go next. Right. I, it's fine if you want to mash it with there. I think that works. Yeah. My long suffering wife. Shall I do the eggs? Okay, we need two beaten eggs. You can use the sugar bowl if you want to do it in a separate bowl. I remember watching a Martha Stewart and she said, oh, always crack your eggs on a flat surface. Like I'd never done that before. You do it all the time. Well, it is a little more convenient. It kind of makes some sense of instead of doing it right at the edge of the bowl, I can and get those little cracks that micro fractures. Well, I mean sometimes yeah, it causes a little bit more of a problem trying to break it open. Unless it's maybe a very thin edge, which Okay, so one of the things that uh, I think is a key, there are a couple of things that I think are key to making a really good banana bread. And one of the things that I think is really key is having a very nice ripe banana. Very, very nice. The riper it is, the more sugar it has, that makes it a little more flavorful. Uh, I would never in a million years ever use a banana like this. This is... I don't even think it's ripe. I wouldn't even eat it. But lots of people eat their bananas very green. I am not one of those people. So um, we've got in here, you've creamed the sugar, you've added the butter. Um, this, so the instructions that grandma has, right? It says cream the sugar and shortening, add butter, add dry ingredients alternating with the bananas. Now I disagree with that as an instruction. Do you know why? Why? No, I don't. You don't know why? Well, because typically flour, the more you stir the flour in a quick bread, the uh, stiffer, the less tender the bread is when you do it, right? So I tend to put the bananas in with the butter and the sugar right away. And then I add the non-flour dry ingredients as well. So while Eric scrapes that, I have in here a little bowl. It is a two teaspoons of baking powder, quarter teaspoon of baking soda, and a half a teaspoon of salt. So then I've, I've mixed it together. All right, there you go. And now I'm gonna add that. And I tend to try to uh, kind of sprinkle it over the top so that it has a chance of being kind of evenly distributed. Mm -hmm. Because of course you don't want it to be clumpy. That's not gonna make for a yummy bread. So Eric's gonna mix that. You don't mix that with the flour? Uh, in quick. everything but quick breads I do. Yeah. In quick breads I do not. I find that the quick, the, the quick breads tend to taste a little bit better if you've kept the flour for the absolute last thing. And the other thing with the quick bread, which is Along those same lines, you want to mix the quick bread as little as possible after you've added the flour. Because again, it makes for a nicer flavor and uh, texture. Okay. 
Oh, you're going to use that? Okay. So... This is kind of that folding action. So. Ah, Eric's going to fold for us because he knows that I'm not a big... Folding folder. fan. You're not a folding fan? But you have lots of fans in the house. Yeah, and I was trying to think if I had more non-folding Japanese fans or more non-folding Chinese fans. Mm. What about what about for your viewers? Will you have many Japanese fans, Chinese fans? You mean as as people watching? Will I have fans who are Japanese? Ooh, okay. What, how's that looking to you? Uh, Is that different? Not what you wanted. I just want as little stirring as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Want to get the edges too. Yeah, and I find that it's not as necessary with a quick, mm. quick bread that you really want to avoid the mixing which right. with the flour, which you're. Am I mixing too much? I okay. think so. Yes. All right. You're more concerned about the folding technique, well, which I... would be good for the white moon cake, but maybe not the bread. Okay. And Grandma's recipe calls for a greased and floured loaf mm. pan, which is all nice and conveniently greased and floured. Would you do the honors oh, of pouring this? But in? no, you're not adding any nuts or any kind of you know, it's chocolate very, chips. No, no, it's very interesting. I remember Grandma's banana tea bread having walnuts because Grandma seems to love walnuts, and. This recipe and the other one, there are actually two copies. Mm -hmm. They do not have any walnuts in there, mm. and yet I think Grandma almost. Well, many had people, walnuts. of course, that's all personal preference. I mean, I'm not such a the nut fan, but it's true. The chocolate chips sometimes can be pretty good. <laughs> it... So, all some variations, some alternatives for you if you're interested. You could have walnuts that you throw in there. I personally like pecans in my banana bread, and uh, chocolate chips are always a hit as well. <laughs> Banana yeah. and chocolate really goes they well together. They do go well together. Mm -hmm. How come Reese's didn't come out with that? It's banana chocolate uh, cup. <laughs> of a, I, I think because artificial banana flavor tastes horrible. Mm, but it was probably the, f I remember it was like the first artificial flavoring they, f dis they created because it's very distinctive or simple. I, I think you're right. I think I heard that too. Okay. Uh, put that in the oven. Okay. Anything else? No. And what? this recipe doesn't say how, how long. How long or how high. No, it does say 350. 350. We're preheating. Yeah, it's it always be all 350, nice 375. Yeah. Like So you can see the banana uh, tea bread batter. We'll put it in the very, oven. Very yellow, like a yellow cake batter, maybe. Or... Mm. It's good. Let me smell it. it. Smells better than the vinegar pie. Much better. You have a better nose than I do, so I don't know. I think it has a a slight banana smell. Slight, yes, but certainly when you cook it. Oh, then the house fills with this beautiful banana bread flavor smell. Okay, so we'll put it in the oven and okay. let's set the timer for 35 minutes. I can't remember. I'm going to go see if the other banana re tea bread recipe has a time and we'll tell you when we come back what time it took. See you soon. All right, just waiting. It's almost ready. We think. All right. I've got a toothpick. We'll test it. The house smells so good. Clean as a whistle. Let's pull it out. How long did you cook it for? I cooked it for exactly one hour, which is what most quick banana breads that I've done are. And you can see other than that little bit of batter right there, it looks fantastic. It looks amazing. And do you remember where we got this loaf pan? Your mom. My grandma. My grandma. My grandma gave us that. Okay, so unfortunately, we have to let it cool. We can't mm. just eat it right now. Darn. But we will try that in just a minute.
with some tea. Ooh, tea, that sounds delightful. It's banana tea bread. I guess we should have, pair it with some tea. Okay, so we'll see you back here in maybe a half an hour. Do you think that's enough time to cool? Sounds good to me. All right, see you soon. We're back. The cake or banana bread is out. I think it looks delicious. How does it smell? Yummy. It's cooled down a little bit, but it's still warm, which is how we want it. Yes, the best. We had to make some tea. In the yes. Back. You want to do the honors? No, you want to cut the bread? The All right. And I'll get us our tea. This is our Keep Calm and Carry On mug from nice. your brother, Mark, who was living in London nice when he got piece. us that. Nice and Ooh, yellow. The heel, yum. Chunks. Ooh, and you can even see some banana in there. Yes. I love it when you can see the pieces of banana inside, like right there. Okay. And then this is my beautiful mug from Jefferson. Okay, hmm. wait, wait, wait. Excellent, here we go. Bon appétit. Bon appétit. It looks incredible. That's really good. Excellent. Bye. Bye.